The Lancashire Witches, Book of the Verse, Alison Device, Chapter 6, The Ordeal by Swimming, Bound hand and foot in the painful posture before described, roughly and insolently handled on all sides in peril of her life from the frightful ordeal to which she was about to be subject. The miserable captive was borne along on the shoulders of Gem Device and Sparshot, her long fine chestnut hair trailing upon the ground, her white shoulders exposing the insolent gaze of the crowd and her trim holiday attire torn to rag by the rustling and sheer. Experience. Nance Redburn, it has been said, was a very comely young woman, but neither her beauty, her youth, nor her sex had any effect on the ferocious crowd. It was too much custom to such brutal and debasing exhibitions to deal anything but savage delight in the set of a fellow creature so scandalously treated and tormented. And the only excuse to be offered for their barbarity is firm belief they maintained that they were dealing with a witch. Nance's cries of distress were only angered by jeers and renewed insults and weird out at length. The poor creature ceased struggling and Treating. The dog raked the illusion she had before exhibited again coming to her aid, but her fortitude was to be yet more severely tested, revealed by the disorder of her habiliment and contrasting strongly with the extreme whiteness of her skin. A dun coloured mole was discovered on her breast. It was pointed out to be hot by Jim Device, the clarity of Wigmar, and the spot where her familiar drained her blood. This is one of the good helps to the discovery of a witch pointed out by our sovereign Lord King, said the attorney, narrowly examining the spot. The one say our wise prince is fine of their mark, and the trying the insensibleness thereof. The other is their fleeting on the water, the water ordeal will come presently, but this insensibility of the mark might be at once tested. Yeah, that can soon be tried, cried Jem with a savage laugh, and taking a pin from his sleeve, the ruffian punched her deeply into the poor beach's flesh. Nance winced, but she set her teeth hardly and repressed the cry that must otherwise be wrung from her. A clear witch, cried Jem, throwing both in, not a drop of blood was, and who feels no, feels no rejoin Nance between her ground teeth, me. You have a hang a sharp eye, your and cart is ye villain. After this barbarous test, the crowd, confirmed by its notion of Nan's guiltiness, hurried on, their numbers increasing as they proceeded along the main street of the village leading towards the river. All the villagers left at home rushing forth on hearing a witch was about to swamp, and when they came within a bow shot of the stream, Sparshot called to Bagley to lay hold of Nance while he himself, accompanied by several of the crowd, ran over the bridge. Part he had to enact quiet him to be on the other side of the water. Meantime, the main party turned down a little path by a gate on the left, which led to garden hedges to the grass banks of powder. And in taking this course, they passed by the cottage of Elizabeth Device, hearing the shouts of the rabble. Little Janet, who had been in no very happy frame of mind since she had been brought home, came forward and seeing her brother called out to him in her usual sharp tone. What's the matter, Jem? Who can you get in there? A witch, replied Jem, gruffly. Nance Redburn, Mother Chattox's granddaughter, come and see her swum in the powder. Janet readily complied, for her curiosity was aroused, and she shared in the family feeling of dislike to Mother Chattox and her descendants. Is this Nance Redburn? She cried, keeping close to her brother. I am glad you caught her at last. How done you find yourself, Nance? I'll let ye, Janet, replied Nance with a bitter look. But it'll become ye to jeer me last seen you're a born witch yourself. I cried, Potts, looking at the little girl. So this is a born witch here, Nance. A born and bred witch, rejoined Nance. Just as her brother, Jem, here is a wizard. They're the grandchildren of Mother Demdai Pendle, the greatest witch in these parts. And children of best device, who's not much better, asked me to witness again. Um, that's all. How do thy tongue, woman, or oh, I'd drown thee, mother Jem, in a tone of deep menace. You can, mon, if I'm the witch, you can me, rejoin Nance. I, Janet's turn, I'll come us wheel us man, one of these days, mark my words. If all that he shan see, ye burn, ye faggot, cried Janet, almost fiercely. You can get in the friend's mark on all your sleeve, cried Nance. I see it written in letters of blood. That's where our cat scratched me, replied Janet, hiding her arm quickly. Good, very good, observed Potts, rubbing his hand. Who but witches can be proof against witches, save our sagacious sovereign? I shall I'll make something of this girl. She seems a remarkably quick child, remarkably quick. Ha. By this time, the party, having gained the broad, flat mead through which the cow of the Lord took their way quickly towards its banks. The spot selected for the ordeal lying about fifty yards above the weir, where the current, ordinarily rapid, was checked by the dam, offering a smooth surface with considerable depth of water. Lovelier or more peaceful scene could not be imagined. The green meads, the bright, clear stream with its white forming weir, the bloody heights reflected in the grassy waters, the picturesque old bridge, and the dark grey ruins beyond it. All, all might have engaged the attention and melted the heart. Then the hour when evening was coming on, and when each beautiful object deriving new beauty from the medium though which it was viewed exercised a softening influence and awakened kindly emotions, the most the scene was familiar and therefore could have no charm of novelty. To Potts, however, it was altogether new, but he was susceptible of few gentle impressions, and neither of the tender beauty of the evening nor the wooing loveliness of the spot awakened any responsive emotion.
motion in his breast. He was dead to everything except the ruthless experiment about to be made. Almost at the same time, that gem device and his party reached the near bank of the stream. The beetle and the others appeared on the opposite side. Little was said, but instant preparations were made for the ordeal. Two long coils of rope having been brought by Bagley, one of them was made fast to the right arm of the victim and the other to the left, and this done, gem device shouting to spar shots to look out, flung one coil of rope across the river where it was caught. With much dexterity by the beetle, the assemblage then spread out on the bank while Jem taking the poor young woman in his arms who neither spoke nor struggled but held her breath tightly approached the river. Dunna drown her, Jem, said Janet, who had turned very pale. Be quiet, wench, rejoined Jem gruffly, and without bestowing further attention upon her, he let down his burden carefully into the water and this achieved he called out to the beetle who drew her slowly towards him while Jem guided her with the other ropes. The crowd watched the experiment for a few moments in profound silence, but as the poor young woman who had now reached the cycle of the centre of the stream still water being supported either by the tension of the gods or by a woman apparel, a loud shout was raised that could not sink and was therefore an undeniable wish. Steady lads, steady a moment, cried hearts enchanted with the success of the experiment. Leave her where she is, what is her buoyancy? But not to be fully attested. We know, masters, he cried with a loud voice, the meaning of this water ordeal, our sovereign lord and master the king, in his wisdom and graciously vouchsafe to explain the matter thus. Water is safe, shall refuse to receive them, meaning wishes of course in the bosom that have shaken up their sacred waters of baptism and willfully refused the benefit thereof. It is manifest, you see, that this diabolical young woman had pronounced her baptism but the water rejected her. None protest, merge as slimy safe, she floats like a cork, or as if the water of the cow that has suddenly become like slab salt waves of dead sea in which nothing can sink. You behold the marvel with your own eyes, my masters. Aye, aye, rejoined Bagalet and several others. Who be a witch for sartin? cried Jem Device, but as he saw chancing slightly to slacken the raw tension of which maintained the equilibrium of the body, the poor woman instantly sank. A groan, as much of disappointment as simply had brought on the spectators, but none attempted to aid her, and on seeing her sink, Jem abandoned the raw altogether. But assistance was at hand. Two persons rushed quickly and furiously to the spot. There were Richard and Nicholas Ashton. The iron bar had at length yielded to their efforts, and the first use they made of their freedom was their hurry to the river. A glance showed them what had occurred, and the younger Ashton, unhesitatingly, plunged into the water, seized the rope dropped by Jem, and called to the beetle to let go his hold. Dragging forth the poor half drowned young woman and placed her on the bank, doing a sum the cords that bound their hands and feet with his sword. The door, still sensible, Nance was so much exhausted by the shot she had undergone, and her muscles were so severely strained by the painful and unnatural posture to which she had been compelled, that she was wholly unable to move her bones were black and swollen, and the cords had put into the flesh, while blood trickled down from the puncture in her breast. Fixing a look of inexpressible gratitude upon her preserver, she made an effort to see the exertion was too great. A violent, hysterical sobbing came on, and her senses soon after forsook her. Richard called loudly for assistance, and the sentiments of the most humane part of the crowd having undergone a change since the failure of the ordeal. Some females came forward and took steps for her restoration. Sensibility having returned, the cloak was wrapped around her, and she was conveyed to a neighbouring cottage and put to bed, where her stiffened limbs were chafed and warm drinks administered, and it began to be hoped that no serious consequences would ensure. Meanwhile, a catastrophe had well high occurred in another quarter. With eyes flashing with fury, Nicholas Aston pushed aside the crowd and made his way to the bank whereon Master Potts stood. Not liking his looks, the little attorney would have taken to his heels, but finding his escape possibly called upon Bagley to protect him, but he was instantly in the forcible grip of the squire, who shouted, I'll teach you mongrel how to play tricks with gentlemen. Master Nicholas, cried a terrified and half-strangled attorney, my very good sir, I entreat you to let me alone. This is a breach of the king's peace, sir, uh, assault and battery under aggrieved circumstances and punishable with ignominious corporal penalties besides fine and imprisonment, sir, I take you to witness the assault, Master Bagley, I shall bring my <laughs> chapel up, then you shall have something to bring your a a action for rassle, cried Nicholas, and seizing the attorney by the nape of the neck with one hand and the hind wings of his double with other, he cast him into a considerable distance into the river, where he fell with a tremendous slash. He is no wizard at all events, laughed Nicholas, as pots went down like a lump of lead, but the attorney was not born to be drowned, at least at this point of his career. On rising to the surface for a few seconds after his immersion, he roared lustily for help, but would infallibly have been carried over the weary gem device and not lung him the rope now disengaged from Nance Redburn, and which he succeeded in catching. In this way, he was dragged out, and as he crept up the bank with a wet pouring from his apparel, which now clung tightly to his lathy limbs, he was greeted by the tears of Nicholas. How like you, the water ordeal, eh, my 
to return him. No occasion for a second trial, I think he gave him device and known his own interests, he would have left him to find the call that he will, but he will find it out in time. He will find it out too, Master Nicholas rejoined, Pot, slapping on his wet hat. Take me to Dragon Quick like a fellow, he had his gem device, and I will encompass thee for thy pains, as well as for the service thou hast to render me. I shall have rheumatism in my joint ends in my loins and roam in my head. Oh dear, oh dear, in which case you will not be able to aim over them that you will visit tomorrow, dear Nicholas. You forget you were to arrest her and bring her for a magistrate. Thy arm, with our lord, thy arm, said Hot's gem device to the friend with him, cried yet to shake him off left the swire we wouldn't have let him drown. What have you changed your mind already, Jen? cried Nicholas in a haughty form. You'll have your grandmother's mind for the service, he rendered her glad. Ha ha. For the matter of two things, I think him again, growled Jen, eyeing the attorney. Assets. No, no, Jen, observed Nicholas. Things must take their goals. For done is done. If Master Hart's be wise, he'll take himself out of court without delay. He'll be glad to get me out of court. One of these days, so I am with Hart's and so will you too, Master Jen. By. A day of reckoning will come for all heavy reckoning. Oh, he added, shivering. How might he chatter? Make what haste you can to the dragon, cried good nature swire. Get your clothes dry and bid John Lane brew you a pottle of strong sack. Swallow it, scalding heart, and you'll never look behind you, nor before me either, retorted heart, scalding sack. This blood versus swire has a new design upon my life. I and go meet me to the dragon, mister, said Agale. Lean or me. Thank you, friend, replied Hart, taking his arm. A word of parting, my Master Nicholas, this is not only the summary of witchcraft I made. I have another case somewhat nearer home. Aha. With this, he hobbled off in the direction of the alehouse, his set being traceable along the dusty road like course of a watering cart. I go after him, growled Jem. No, you won't like to join Nicholas, and if you'll take my advice, you'll get out of all as fast as you can. You'll be safe on the heath, and all that here when Sir Ralph and Master Roger Norwell come to know what is take place. Man, this era, the hounds will be out in Boris tomorrow. Jem growled something in reply, and seizing his little sister's hand, strode off with her towards his mother's dwelling, uttering not a word by the way. Having seen Nancy Redburn conveyed to cottage, as before mentioned, Richard Aston, regardless of the wet state of his own apparel, now joined his little the squire, and they walked towards the abbey together, conversing on what had taken place while the crowd served, some returning to the bowels of the churchyard, and others to the green day, merriment in no wise and by the peace of currency, which they would on as part of their soul. As some of them passed by laughing, singing and dancing, Richard Ashton remarked, I can scarcely believe it to be the same people I do so lately saw in the churchyard. They then seem totally devoid of humanity, for they are human enough, rejoined Nicholas, so you cannot expect them to show mercy to a witch any more than to a wolf or other savage and devouring beast. So the means taken to prove her guilt was absurd as iniquitous, said Richard, and savour of the barbarous agents if she had perished or concerned in the trial would have been guilty of murder, but no judge would condemn them to a needle, and they have the highest authority in the realm to all them. As you believe in such a witch in the general way, I will show none traces of life, God, and man, and one slave to say that they are out of the pale of this human charity. No criminal, however, great out of the pale of this human charity, while this is a such scene as we can be given by the disgrace of humanity and a mockery of the sin. Over and each one of them, a great day is committed. For this poor young woman to be a guilty, what then? Our laws are made for affecting as well as punishing as wrong. It should be a reign of the good and condemned for punishment. Our laws have been a torture of reaching up to the full truth, said a young man with a shudder. And it is another relic of the ruthless age because torture is only allowed in the eye of the law and can be inflicted by a normal but his sworn servant. But supposing this poor young woman innocent of the violence due to her, if I really believe her to be how then will be the future. I do not believe they are innocent to join the Their relationships were notorious based on her fabrication of images make her just least susceptible. Then let her be examined by a magistrate of which will even then warm tired of when I think that Alison Vice is liable to the same approach as we can make the consequences of her relationship with Mother Died and scarce contain my indignation. It is only for her to be joined the for the whole Nancy the Salem is the most infuriated with Alison of her gentle device. I saw it by the good and Expression passing over his countenance, but she could even move from that family. To what purpose the man did it to a family of more likely to move from a family of the family. Poor girl, it's a new issue, and fell into a rebellion, which would be broken until they reached the other. She returned to the device and reached the party of the children, and even said into the chair, and the hand seemed to walk in the bedroom. I laughed at the other and said, You're very generous, and you're just watching the TV. Mother, he comes to warn, hey, 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 and he summoned them to bed and glad on his hand. Jem gave her a significant look on which she more 
Especially when the crowd games paired as she win me now. Pots may set out on that journey, but he wanna come back again, remark Jem in a somber tone. Wait till you've seen your grandmother or you do what lies, said Elizabeth. I wait, added a voice. What's that? demanded Jem, laying down his knife wall. Elizabeth did not answer in words, but her significant looks were quiet response in a way so oh, you win, mother, he said in an altered tone after a ball and boy in his and he added, Did Mistress Nutter put any question to you about Alison? More no enough lad clad as Elizabeth. Or oh, what had I tell her? She praised her beauty and said how unlike she was Janet and the lad I had and wondered how I come to such a downturn. Money other things aside and what could I say to it all oh, except, except what mother interrupted Jen? It said that she were my child just as much as Janet and the mm, exclaimed Jen. Mm, they called a voice that had previously spoken. Jen looked at his mirror and took a long bull at the ale Any more messages to Malkin Tower? He asked. Getting up. No, mother will understand, replied Elizabeth. Bid her to be her guard or the enemies of Meaning parts, said Jem. Meaning parts, answered the voice. There are strange echoes here, said Jem, looking around suspiciously. At this moment, Tib came from under a piece of furniture where he had apparently been laying and rubbed himself familiarly against his legs. I neither be afraid of all happening to your mother, said Jem, patting the cat's back. Tib went to care on your AA, replied Elizabeth, pending down at him. He's a trusty cat, but the ill tempered animal would not be propitiated, but erected his back and menaced her with his claws. Yo, and abandoned him, mother, said Jem. One word for I saw. Are you quite sure Potts didn't overhear your conversation with Mistress Nutter? Why'd you ask Jem? She replied, was summer the name through out to Squire Nicholas just now rejoined Jem. He said he'd another case of witchcraft near one. What could he mean? What indeed? cried Elizabeth Glenn. Look at him, exclaimed her son. As he spoke, the cat sprang towards the inner door and scratched violently against it. Elizabeth immediately raised the latch and found Janet behind it with a face like scarlet. You mean listening, you young eavesdropper, cried Elizabeth, boxing her ears soundly. Take that for your pains and that touch me again and my spots shan't know I he had said a little girl resting her tears. Elizabeth regarded her angrily but the looks of the child was so spiteful that she not dared to strike her. She glanced to her table the uncertain cat was now rubbing against himself in the most unfriendly manner against Janet. Yo shan't pay for this last presently said Elizabeth. Best not provoke me mother rejoined Janet in a determined tone. If you don't all seek for Chanel I know why Jim going to Malkin Tower tonight and why you're afraid of my spots. How did I tongue or I shall eat Little pet cried her mother fiercely. Janet replied with a mocking laugh while Tib rubbed against her more fondly than ever. Let her alone, into told Jem, and now I'm on be off, so fare you well, mother, and you too, Janet. And with that, he put on his cap, seized his cudgel, and quitted the cottage.